Hey you guys, we've been back from our vacation for a few days and Trevon's teaching us how to make something. Yeah. Today we're going to have balsamic pork and chicken and we're going to have roasted veggies and rice pilaf. Something you might not know is that I'm actually a very good cook. He I know is. a lot about cooking and I don't have to use the recipes. <laughs> I was trained well when I worked at Disney and I've just learned on my own also. There's a lot of stuff that I know about cooking. You've so, always been good at cooking. Yeah. So today, <laughs> we're gonna start with the vegetables. So all together, to cook the rice, it's gonna take 15 minutes. To cook the veggies, it's gonna take like 10, 15 minutes. And to cook the meat, probably like 15, 20 minutes. But where all the time is, is in the preparation. So pretty much, let me think, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to prepare the meat first, because I'm gonna let that sit in a bowl. Here's the pork he has out, and there's the chicken. And there's my channel, you guys. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> so, first, I'm going to get some spices out of here and things like that. I already got some kosher salt. Now, a lot of people, when they say, if you'll see a recipe and they'll say kosher salt <laughs> or a specific kind of salt, a lot of people will just use whatever salt they have. Um, excuse me, like, like me. I was the worst at that. <laughs> and that's not true. Different <laughs> kinds of salt are, they're that way specifically for a reason. Kosher salt is coarse. It's a little bit less salty, if you will. It's not as strong. And the way that it is, the crystal, the crystalline structure sort of gets into the meat and the things mm. you're cooking and it sort of, it's hard to explain, but those little crystals get in there and it changes the flavor. And you can sit here and you can put a ton of kosher salt on it. It'll just give it that nice, smooth flavor and it won't be too salty. You'll see me sitting here putting a ton of kosher salt on something and it'll be like, isn't that too salty? No, not at all. But if you just put regular table salt, it's just going to make it taste salty. Gross. Oh, well. How'd that even happen? Well, that's what you don't do with kosher salt. Kosher salt's supposed to go on food. Wow. Wow. Wow, look at the trail. So that's one of the most important parts of cooking is messing up and having fails. If you don't fail at all when you cook, then you didn't cook it. I forget where I was because I spilled on my Well, you were talking about salt. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta use kosher salt. Mm -hmm. I usually always use kosher salt for things like this. Pepper, when it says use black pepper, it doesn't really matter to me. All that stuff that's already fresh, or that's already been ground up in the little container, it's not very good because it's been sitting there, it's dried out, just like coffee. You always buy fresh bean coffee. Mm -hmm. So even if you just get one of these little grinders from there, it's way better than using regular, just black pepper that you get in the little container. We're gonna be using balsamic vinegar today. We're going to be using sugar, which you'll find out sugar. soon a lot. Uh, anything else that I need? I might come back for a few more spices later, but for now, I believe that's all I need from this cabinet. So garlic is a very strong, very pungent flavor. So a little bit of garlic goes a long way when you cook. So you don't have to put the whole head of garlic in there. You just need one or two cloves. It depends on what you're making. Uh, for this, because I'm going to be sort of marinating and soaking the meat in there for a little while, I'm going to use a few garlic cloves, maybe like two or three. Um, so what a lot of people do, they have a hard time getting the cloves out of the shell here. And the quickest way to get the cloves out is just to crush it. Unless you need something for a whole clove of garlic, it doesn't really matter. You can crush it. Mm. And then it slides right off just like that. Oh, yeah. And there you go. No trying to peel it or soak it or do whatever other people do. The best way. And it's still basically a whole clove of garlic. When you're done with that, I dare you to lick your finger. Just touch your finger onto your tongue, just like that. It'll be unsanitary. And then, of course, wash. Do it. It'll like burn your tongue, man. I used to work with a man who opened garlic and chewed whole entire cloves. So you worked with Wario. <laughs> At Earth Fair. Eric, do you remember Eric who did the bulk foods? Mm -hmm. He was always chewing on garlic. It's good for you, but it's spicy. Not good enough. <laughs> this breath didn't smell good. 
Now that I see, I'm gonna actually do four. Clothes. Okay. Well, one's kind of small. What am I making? Oh, you smashed that one. Whoops. Oh well. Still mm -hmm. garlic. That's not hard. I always think fresh garlic means a lot of work, but I guess I it doesn't have to be. So I'm gonna dice it up pretty small. And actually, I'm not gonna use this peering knife for this. For this. I'm gonna use this we really knife. have a lame selection of knives. It's probably like a bread knife or something. I'm not really taking time to make perfectly squared dice. Uh, I'm just gonna cut it up into little pieces because it's just, basically you're getting that inside juices out because it's gonna be soaking in there, but it doesn't have to be perfect. That's why I just kind of took it and put it into a little pile and just kind of smashed it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Really with garlic, it's mostly aesthetic. If you want little cubes in there, then you can cut it nicely, but if you're putting it in something, usually it's just for the flavor. So you can just, you don't have to dice it up perfectly. Trevon's actually gonna be making a YouTube channel soon. I don't know the name yet. He doesn't know the name yet, so we can't tell you the name. But when he does, he's excited. Be all <laughs> kinds of stuff from me talking and vlogging to adventures. I love to go on adventures, traveling, local, all kinds of crazy stuff, so keep an eye out. Yes, and I'll make a video um, here to tell you guys, I give you the link and tell you what it's called and all that. Because I'll be so happy when my baby makes a YouTube. So, we've got the garlic, we're gonna take chicken broth, and we're going to take balsamic. So, show me your broth. This is the broth I like to get, you guys. Well, it's organic, which is nice, but also they don't use MSG. Is that one the one that says no MSG? Mm, it did. Where's Somewhere that? on there. Somewhere on there. Somewhere on there. <laughs> Right there. Oh, no MSG added. There you go. I like to actually see that on the label. So what I usually do, because we're making more meat than I thought I was going to today. It's so slow coming out. It comes out slow. I know. One. Oops. That's why you always do it over the pan. To <laughs> make you have to go to the bathroom. No. Two cups chicken broth in the garlic? It's not actually a cup, it's three, three fourths a cup. Oh, that's three fourths a cup. I thought it was a cup. Okay, so one and a half cups. And then I'm going to take. Balsamic. Are you just making this up? What? This isn't from a recipe somewhere. No. This is just your thing. Mm hmm. I've made it before. This is an original Travon recipe, you guys. What is that, two thirds cup? Mm hmm. Ooh. So you want to put slightly less balsamic in there because it's very strong. But you want equal parts. Otherwise it's not gonna be balsamic-y enough. And... <laughs> That'll do. Two thirds and two thirds? Equals something. <laughs> Less than uh, three fourths and three fourths, which I know what that one is. Okay, so... When you have this balsamic, it's very tart. Uh, and you know what balsamic tastes like. And the chicken broth is, if you have this one, it's low sodium. So you're not gonna have very much sweetness in there. So when you marinate this chicken and this pork, it's gonna taste kind of tart and balsamic -y. So what I like to do is I actually take some sugar. It doesn't have to be too much. You can actually put enough sugar to taste. If you want it to be more on the sweet balsamic side, put a lot in there. If you want just a little bit, you can put only a little bit. I used to use sugar cubes, but I don't think I have any sugar mm -hmm. cubes anymore. That was an easy way to measure. Um, but really, it's just a taste. You have this much balsamic and this much fluid. So, I mean, I would put like four sugar cubes. I would cubes. guess about that much right there. Maybe like this much. Put it in there, stir it up, wait for it to dissolve a little bit and that'll kind of take away some of that harsh balsamic kick. Are you trying that just plain? Ooh, it's pretty good. It's like, it doesn't taste like balsamic. 
But it does, it does taste like balsamic. It's like a, it's pretty sugary. So now we're just gonna take this meat, and soak it in there. That's all you gotta do. Hmm. And the chicken too? Mm-hmm. You can mix the meats, it's fine. I mean, I'm not going to. Well, I don't see why not. I mean, you're gonna cook them all really well, right? Yeah. This is actually the first of many cooking videos to come. I know I've told you guys that I want to make videos of cooking, healthy foods and things, and I actually am going to do that. I'm going to the grocery store in the next few days, and I have a list of things I'm going to make this week. And I'm going to make uh, chili, and I basically, on, my, on the drive, like I said, we just got back from a three-week vacation, and that's going to go on my Sea Cruisers channel. It actually just started yesterday, the day before yesterday, so check that out. But on the ride, I just looked up a bunch of low-calorie recipes, chicken, pastas, all kinds of things, and I'm making those. And I only gained four pounds on my trip. I was so excited to see that because I was kind of worried. Even though we only ate one time a day, I did have cheese and stuff and some sodas, which I haven't been having. But four pounds isn't bad. <laughs> Might be gone already. Roasted vegetables. And that's not something I really have to explain. You can use whatever kind of vegetables you want as long as they're Roastable, like you can't put tomatoes in there because they're just gonna fall apart. You turn to mush. But yellow squash. You can use cherry tomatoes. Those are small and plump. Uh, I've yeah. got a sweet onion. I've got baby portobello mushrooms. I've got red potatoes, green and red peppers, and I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic in there also to give it some flavor. Mm. And then I'm gonna toss mm. in some olive oil, and I'm gonna put some kosher salt and some fresh cracked pepper medley in there, and I'm gonna bake it in the oven at 425. Speaking of roasted vegetables, I have this recipe for roasted kale. You take the kale and you put some kind of seasoning on it and you put it in the oven and you kind of, well, I guess it's baked, right? Cause you don't use oil. I don't know, maybe spray oil. You can. Crispy, like kale chips. Oh, I can't wait to try that. I want that one. And honey, you can throw these in there because I will eat those. <laughs> you want me to cut them? Nope. Oh, there. I was going to get some cherry tomatoes, but instead I saw these. And Wild I thought this would be a little bit better than cherry tomatoes. Like mm. I said about tomatoes, these are more plump and firm, if you will. So these hold up a little bit better when you're cooking, um, especially if you're sauteing or roasting. Uh, but I don't know how these little ones are going to be. I wouldn't cut them. They seem pretty firm. I'm going to cut them in half. Well, they're the size of a mushroom. Still, I'm just going to cut okay. them in half. So I don't know how all these tomatoes are going to hold up. I don't even know what these are. I've actually never seen a tomato that I looks like this before. I just want to eat one of those. Oh, yeah. Look it at was that. hard to not eat it. Looks like a little bell pepper. This one has a little tail. So I'm just going to hmm. cut these tomatoes right in half. Nice and firm. Mm. It smells good. Looks delicious. I bet it tastes good. Now, you can roast almost any vegetable that 
you would be able to tell you can roast. Like I said, not tomatoes or anything like that. Uh, but when you cut them, you have to make them big enough because roast vegetables are gonna be the kind of thing that you eat one by one with like a fork and they do shrink a little bit when you cook them. So just make sure that the slices are big enough. Kind of like chunks, like good. chunky? Yeah, like chunks. Okay. So good. You want me to stir it, Trevon? I would like to stir it anyway. I'll just kind of move it around a little stir bit. Up. Oh my God. Who ate it? I'm sorry. A piece of garlic? I let him sniff it. He just snatched it. He spit that right out though. Did it burn your tongue? Did it burn your tongue, Sonny? Have you ever eaten garlic? <laughs> I didn't know garlic did that. Yeah. It'll burn your tongue, man. Can you imagine just eating a whole... You're gonna have garlic bread. I hear the crunch. Is it still... My mouth's on fire. <laughs> yeah, if you're cutting garlic and you're done and you take your tip of your finger and you touch it to your tongue, it like stings it. What are you cutting more garlic for? Oh, that's gonna go on top of the vegetables. <gasps> Oh, you didn't, this is for, oh, there wasn't any in there already? Oh yeah, nope. we definitely gotta have garlic. See, I'm not gonna mix it in here. I'm gonna still put it on top. You should put whole garlic cloves in there. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Roasted whole garlic cloves. How much did you drizzle it? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that smells amazing. And then you're okay, gonna put your hands in there and kind of just coat all of them? When I pour it in there. Okay. And it's going in here with the squash. Mm -hmm. oh, so good. I like lots of garlic. Can you pour garlic if you don't want to have something to do with that last clove there? If you want to cut it. I just put lotion on my tattoo. Your tattoo is all the way up. Oh. So I got a tattoo, you guys. And you can see it in the video of, that I told you about on Sea Cruisers. I got a New Orleans, a custom voodoo doll. And on my Facebook page, you guys might actually have saw how it came to be. And, I, I thought of things I wanted, Minara helped me, and then she drew it up, and there's the other one, a little totro I had added to the top. And Trevon got one, which you've probably seen while he was uh, cooking, but there it is. The first to the start of his sleeve, right? Mm -hmm. And Chris got his first tattoo, which I'll show you. Uh-oh, there's water on the computer when he comes back out. Gotta have my handy-dandy diaper wipes, I'm telling you. Um... vegetables separate because you can't stack them. Oh, do you need another pan? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna. Yeah, oh, cook. the pizza pan will be good because it's flat. One layer is, needs yeah. to be cooked in Fine. one layer. Fine, that's good. <gasps> Those tomatoes, everything looks so, see this is, I don't even need the meat, man, just give me this stuff right here. Then why'd you make me go to the store? I'm joking, I want the meat, but I'm saying the vegetables are good. <laughs> so, I just smelled these vegetables and they are spectacular once again said this before sometimes you don't want to but sometimes you do if you could just smell this yeah and you just did the pepper mill on it mm -hmm. i'll show you over here oh, I yeah, way too much oh there you go way too much what way too many veggies for no. one pan oh i thought you said you made way too many i'm like no you didn't way too much for one pan oh my god please okay. do this more often Come on. all this flavor is going to get baked in there now, my recipes I'm going to be making aren't going to use much oil and things. It's going to be really low calorie, but yummy. And I'm trying to incorporate, I, I just basically want the kids to eat it. They want to eat it, but Womanara well, is picky. <laughs> and <laughs> still, I'm going to make a lot of recipes that I think the kids will like. 
and I'm excited about it. And over time, I will upgrade and get different things I need in the kitchen and I mean, I just ate more squash. knives. Squash. Squash is good. That was the first time you ever had yellow squash? Oh, really? It tasted like nothing, though. Yeah, I know. But cooked, it also kind of tastes like nothing. But I literally put balsamic on it, and it literally tasted so good. My grandparents used to make squash, and they would slice it thin like that, and they'd coat it or something, and they'd fry it in a pan. It was fried squash, and it was the most amazing thing. I just remember that from the country, going out into the country for Sunday. Do you remember that? Their mm -hmm. fried squash yeah. and their homemade green beans. Oh, my goodness, it was so good. And now you're just drizzling balsamic on it. Mm -hmm. so Let me show them this balsamic. All the balsamic they had. I know. Well, I had before you had, and then you went and got more. So this is what we use. I mean, this it's is what really I have the right best now. Stuff ever. It's amazing. Cola Vita balsamic vinegar. So let's stick on. Yep, they had it at Ross for $2.99. I bought a bunch, and then he came over, and then he says he's gonna go buy some. So he bought all that was left I after was that. I was gonna buy one, and then I was like, you know what? There's only like two ninety nine. Yeah. I just grabbed them all. Uh, that's really cheap because this stuff is not cheap in the grocery stores. And I like one that is, um, well, there's different kinds, you know, but some of them are cold pressed and. I saw glazed and I at public. Yep, you know, I think that's that what Faber had. had. You know what I put it on? What? Pizza, like pepperoni pizza. Oh, yes. It takes 15 minutes to make the rice. Yes, 15 minutes to make the rice. So this is what I do. Basically rice is two to one. So it's two cups of water, one cup of rice. Put it in the pot, uh, boil the water with the salt, turn it down to two or three depending on your stove. Cover it really tightly with foil or lid. Am I in this video? Let it. Probably. Probably. You're just tying your shoe, but it's okay. We know you're going to wash when you're done. <laughs> um, anyway, 15 minutes in the timer. Don't touch it. 15 minutes later, it'll be perfect. But this time, what, I, what we do is we substitute the water with chicken broth. And you got to put a lot of butter in there. With a the lot of, just like with grits, a lot of butter. A whole stick. And a good amount of salt, but not too much salt. But um, salt. speaking of grits, I have these amazing grits and I can make them really yummy. I'm gonna show you guys that too in another video. I actually have decided that I'm gonna do, well, I was thinking about doing a vlog that's one day a week that's called something special and where I will just sh talk to you guys or show you things I wanna show you. Like I have a lot of things I wanna show you guys since our trip. Um, but anyway, back to the thing. I'm making rice right now. So how much rice do you need, honey? A bunch? Yeah, it's gonna be a big meal. And I, my favorite rice, the only kind of rice I use is jasmine. Although I did get some brown rice. I don't really eat a lot of rice and kids love the jasmine. It's gonna be a big old meal. So here's our meat after it's set. Oh, look at it. Are you using all the sauce? No. That's what I wanna know I'm if you're taking out that I'm cooking it in the sauce. Okay. All of it? Mm -hmm. Not all of it. See what I like to do is mm -hmm. I cook it first mm -hmm. with some oil. Mm -hmm. As you would normally make this food. And then when that oil starts to dry up and cook down, you put this in there for the final minutes of cooking. Oh, caramelize it. It cooks down and it caramelizes and it reduces. Yeah. And makes like a nice glaze, if you will. Okay. So like I said, I use a broth instead of water. So I'm gonna do eight cups of liquid, four cups of rice. I use some of that broth. That's okay, we have another one, right? We have two more. Fine, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put four cups of broth in here. I mean, eight cups of broth in here right now. No water, all broth. One. Get to squeeze it. Two, like I said about kitchen mishaps. <laughs> Three. Well, we're definitely not professional chefs or anything. <laughs> we're real. It tastes good. Four, it does. Four. Okay, four. <laughs> a little to grow on. This is the one I also get that's not organic, just depending if it's on sale or whatever, but it still says no MSG, but it's not organic. Oh. I don't know how much the price difference is, but this one's not organic. So now that I just measured this out, I remember. Just for you to know too, Trevon, this is four cups. So basically. It says on there. Well, whatever. If you look in the serving size, okay. the serving is one. Well, when I'm making rice, I just take my little pan, I use one of these and two cups of rice, and that's it. It's easy. So I don't have any sticks of butter, so I'm just using a big old scoop of, I can't believe it's not butter. Oh, Whoops. That's absolutely It's okay to use this kind of salt, regular salt, right? I would use kosher. Really? And rice? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't kosher really know how much to cooking. put in there. Oh, gosh, that smells amazing. Smell that. How's that smell, Zarius? Actually, I can cook it off Here, honey, you salt it because I never use kosher salt like in rice or anything. This much? I have no idea. 
How much do you sure, want? Sure, that looks good. We'll just start with that. You can always salt the rice more if you need it, but if it's too salty, it's going to be nasty. And then I'm going to turn this on high until it boils quickly. All right, so everything's going, like I said, it'll take like 15, 20 minutes to cook it all. You're going to be we're waiting the rice. Boil. We should have boiled it. It's not even starting to boil yet. Oh, well. <laughs> so here's the oh. vegetables. You want to cook it on the bottom oh. side. Smell that. And then here's our meat. I the chicken. Cooking away. Oh, that's it's mine. To reduce. Mine and ours. Let me flip it really quick. God, that smell. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take forever on a little burner, I think, but it's okay. Look at that. Mm. Keep it covered up because the top cooks, uh -huh. but we don't cover it up. Let's we'll see the pork. The bigger can. The oh pork. my god. Nice plump. This is gonna keep it juicy. So what I do is I always preheat when I'm putting mm -hmm. meat on. A lot of people they just slap it on there and mm -hmm. that makes the outside get warm before the inside does. What you gotta do is you have to let your meat kind of sit so that it can kind of get toward not room temperature so that it gets bad, but so that it can cool down straight out of the fridge. Uh, and then you gotta preheat your pan as well. You gotta put your oil in there. And the way to tell your oil is ready without it getting burnt, when you move the pan around, it's gonna flow around like water and not be thick at all. So you gotta preheat the oil. You gotta preheat the, uh, you got to let your meat sit. Uh, and then you put it on there once everything's all preheated. That way it's gonna cook evenly from the inside mm. out. And there it you just smells so good. Look how plump and juicy. I know. Pork this. chops aren't usually like that. I know. A lot of nice. pork chops are dry. We'll come back here in a few minutes. The rice, the meat is done and the water is boiling, so I'm going to turn the timer on. Oh, it's, is that the timer, Trevon? Yeah, that's the timer. I need to reset it. Okay. i got to do 15 minutes on this rice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trevon, for making this and show us how to make it. So you I can stick that back there. in the oven for now. I actually baked it for a little bit longer than I said I was going to originally. Wait, how long did you say you were going to bake it? I, I think I missed it. I said I was going to do it for 15 minutes. Uh -huh. I did it for 15 minutes. And it was edible, but I wanted it to be a little bit more cooked down. Mm -hmm. So I put it in there for another, like, I'd say it's been in there for 8 minutes. Longer? I did it for, like, 20 minutes, a little over 20 minutes. And you tested it, it's good? And it all depends on how much, because I had two things of it in there. So it cooks slower true. than if I had just one. So that's true. 15 minutes should be good if you're making a smaller batch. But I made a big batch, so it took. Mm. This is one of those things that's not a set. You put it in there, you leave it. This is one of those things you got to keep checking yeah. up on. It's not anything raw, so you can eat it. So throughout, it tastes a little bits and pieces. I tried each one of them just to see how they're. Coming Please, can along. I have that yellow tomato right there? Oh, the tomato's yes. mushy. I know. Here's a tomato. On a potato. And the mushroom. Look, oh, there's a mushroom stem. I like the a mushroom potato. stem. <laughs> there's a mushroom for you. Oh, that's hot. How about some onion? And a piece of garlic. There's one right there. So we'll have some squash. Look how soft it is. I know. I've been eating that squash plain. It's really good. Red pepper. Oh, yeah. And a little piece of garlic right there. Green pepper. Where's the garlic? There it yeah. is. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Here you go. Tell me what you think. Oh, yes. I know it's hot. I just want to eat that right now. I'm going to eat the garlic. Mm. Put that balls on. The garlic still has this really, it has all its flavor left. But not spicy. Whoop, yeah, a little this spicy. This is just roasted. It's not cooked down yeah. or anything like that. It still has all of its flavor. You look at the tomato. It's oh, yeah, it's a little spicy still. And like I said, I put on there olive oil. I put olive oil on the bottom of the pan and then I toss in olive oil. I put that fresh mm. cracked pepper. I put a lot of kosher salt on there. And then I put balsamic. I drizzle balsamic. You want him to make you a little plate, Chris, with one of each thing? To taste while I we're waiting? I baked it at 425. And the rice is almost done. The meat's and everything's done. ready. I'm keeping it in here. It looks ugly, but I promise. Oh, it's going to be amazing. It's not burnt or anything. That's just that caramelized oil and balsamic stuck on it. Oh my God, Trevon, everything is so amazing. It's not mushy and it's not hard. It's actually perfect. This is the rice after 15 minutes exactly. 
as you can see, I haven't started or opened anything because the steam is what cooks it. And when I go in, I'm not gonna like stir it. You basically just scoop up your rice and get it as it is because if you stir it, you're gonna make it mush. But you can see how it looks perfectly cooked and delicious. And now we're going to go out back and enjoy our food in the rain. It's May. Like I said, I've been gone for three weeks and I came back to May showers. <laughs> this is so special. Trevon is bringing the food out. Um, it pretty much stopped raining, but it's okay even if it was because luckily we have this covered top above us. The pool is about to overflow from all the rain and it's ready to get in. It's not even cold, but I can't get in until my tattoo heals fully. So maybe even a month before I can get in. Hmm, I want to get in so bad. This wine is very special. We got it on our trip that we just took and we were driving from Houston to San Antonio and we about halfway saw a sign for winery so we looked it up. Not that one, but we found this one that was rated really well on TripAdvisor. Everybody said how nice the person was and everything. It was an amazing experience. It truly was a gorgeous place. It's going to be in the vlogs on Sea Cruisers, but we got this bottle. The Moravia, Moravia, Moravia Vineyard and Winery. It is the best wine I have ever, ever, ever had in my entire life. I can't even describe it how good it is. And it's bottled there. Look, it says Go Texan on it. <laughs> and it's aged in American Oak, Kentucky barrels. I love oak aged stuff. She's trying to get it, Chris. Ew, we'll leave it alone. Where did that come from? How do they get in here if it's all covered? Sebby, you don't want to... <laughs> Candace is like, what is this? We're trying to get a worm. Here's the food. My plate, and Zarius's plate with the chicken and the veggies and the rice. On our Disney plates. Mmm. Oh. They're actually all Disney plates. This plate we got from Japan in Epcot years ago. I love it so much. And that plate, Contemporary Resort, but it was for sale at the cast member outlet place where they put things that they don't need anymore and cast members can buy them for their own personal use. Panda, that's not for you. <laughs> Sorry. This looks just like a grape. It looks exactly, like grape. It's exactly like a grape. Tastes like a grape? What if it was a grape? What if someone put a grape in there as a joke? It's not a grape? Not a grape. <laughs> This rice is absolutely perfect. I'm telling you, it's so easy to cook that way and it's so good. It's pretty good. You like it? Yeah. Bon appetit, everyone. Bon appetit. This chicken is perfect, Trevon. Next time he said he was gonna put the potatoes in a little, a few minutes before the other vegetables, cause they're, they're not hard, but they could be a little more done. And then the tomatoes, uh, after the other stuff is cooked a while, just adjust it. Like you said, he's not making anything from recipe, so when you're cooking something on your own and you experiment, you see how to adjust it the next time. Enough to teach you guys.